Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo on the Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. Boys, I really miss when you guys do the intro. I miss Cade when he used to go gun ho and do this intro and kind of take it away from the top. But I will go ahead and do this, and I will be the master of the ceremony here, the MC. And thank you guys very, very much, our little digital family that we have that is joining us. We appreciate you guys. We are the family who believes what, Caden? In the Torah. The Torah still exists. The Torah is still relevant in our lives. What else do we believe, Jade? Uh, we have a Messiah that can uh, that we use his blood for our forgiveness of sins, that he died so that we have forgiveness from breaking the Torah. What is what we believe our Messiah's name is? Yahoshua. Yahoshua. And why isn't it Jesus? Because there are no J's in Hebrew. Okay, so this was the little in, in the little uh, questioning that I had that you guys can do our intros with, right? Because this is who we are and this is what we believe. We believe that the Torah is good for all times. We believe that it is what we should bind our lives to. It is what we should listen to in the morning, what we should go to bed to at night. It is everything that should be important to us. Without the Torah, we have no life. Without our Messiah, Yahushua, we have no life. Without both of them together, we are a doomed people. We are a doomed humanity. And it is only by the grace of our, our creator and by the sacrifice of his son that we do have a Levitical priesthood now, which is him who is our Melchizedek priest, and he's also our sacrifice. And so we don't need the old school Levitical people that kill things on altars and various things like that because those are gone. The temple veil ripped from the top down, and that signified that we no longer need those old sacrifices that were corrupted. They were corrupted by man. They were not corrupted by Yah. They were corrupted by the generations of Talmudic, Pharisaic, Sadducitic kind of Judaism. And so we are now in the book of Mark, we are looking for commandments, and I just want to remind everybody here at this table, even though we are still reading the same stories, we need to be pulling the commandments out of this and re-putting it with the rest of the commandments that we have. So far, we have something like 40 commandments out of Matthew that we have, and so we want to be adding to those commandments for Messiah Yahushua, and so that is it. Um, today is month eight on our Creator's calendar. It is a, the 14th day of his month. It is the fourth day of this week. Uh, November 9th, I guess, is the Gregorian uh, satanic calendar that we are on. And uh, I guess it is a uh, Wednesday for those of you on the workforce. And I hope you guys have a wonderful work day. And I hope you can make it out of your work day back to the peace of your homes. So let us get going. I need a handy dandy drum roll. Boom. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. I have the best band anywhere in these jungles. I will tell you that for sure. And we have live every uh, every Sunday morning. We are live in the jungle band. Sunday. No, I'm just saying. I'm just talking about our jungle band, right? You know, the jungle band. Yeah. Nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. it. Everyone's like, wait, wait, it. we're going, what? Okay, so anyway, uh, that joke didn't work out, but I will continue on with the next ones later. Okay, Mark 8 is where we are at. Um, Caden is reading out of? The Hebrews Bible. Jaden is reading out of? Sefer. Mom's reading out of? Amplified. Or mom or Nicole, as you guys would know her <laughs> as. Um, and Eli is reading out of the NIV and the King, and he is he is uh, running my top piece of this as I can read at the bottom. So let's begin. In those days, the crowd being very great and having not to eat, Yahushua called his Talmudian near and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, for these have now been with me three days and have not to eat. And if I dismiss them unfed to their home, they shall faint on the way. For some of them have come from afar. And his Talmudian answered him, How shall anyone be able to feed these people with bread here in the desert? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said seven. I think we have to understand that they're like slightly uh, like slow or behind. They don't understand that Yehoshua just did this. We can't blame GMOs on this. And I we think can't blame that they haven't had some sort of visual display on this. They're still without understanding. They're, they're still, still without understanding. They have more bread loaves than they did last time. Yeah, this time they have more bread loaves. And he's like, there's some people we can't feed them. And he, and he breaks up bread and fish and feeds like 5,000 people with all this extra food left over. And then again, he's like, well, we need to feed them. And he's like, how are we going to do that? It just it doesn't make sense. They're kind of like slow. So if this were me and I was his disciple... Probably about two hours before I started getting hungry, I would have started shaking the crowd down for like two or three pieces of bread and a couple of fish. Anyone have anything? Look, we can do anything with anything. Does anyone have anything? Right? 
And you know, I would I would uh, look beside here. We have this some breadcrumbs here. You can make more breadcrumbs. Somebody has some pasta right here. Make some extra pasta. You know, something like that. But these guys don't seem to get it right. They cannot figure this out. I can only probably say that Yah has not blinded them, but he has slowed their understanding down so that they can, I, I don't know, maybe assimilate all of this. I, I don't know. Let's continue on. And he commanded the crowd to sit down on the ground and taking the seven loaves, giving thanks. He broke them and gave them to his town Midian to put before them. And they put them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish and having Barak. He said to put them also before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they picked up seven large baskets of broken pieces. And those eating were about 4,000. And he dismissed them. Okay, so we have this before. Not the first time. Um, not the second time we've witnessed a miracle. Um, and, you know, here we go again. And so we are leaving now. And somebody has to carry away seven baskets of food, right? There's, there's a lot of food. Nice. Yeah, and this isn't the first time they've carried away excess food when they had zero. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. And those eating were about 4,000, and he dismissed them. And immediately entered into the boat with his Talmudian. He came to the parts of Dalmanithu. And the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, saying, seeking from him a sign from the Shimeim, trying him. Okay? So what does it mean, a, a sign? What are, what are they looking for? Like what, a miracle, how do they do it? some great event. They're looking for something large for you who should do, like... Show us something. Show us something, oh great master or, or great prophet. Just, Show us your power. Just struck him all down lightning. <laughs> <laughs> and sighing deeply in his spirit, he said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. That is so ironic when he was the sign, right? That is the craziest thing right there. They've been with him. They saw him. They've seen him take withered hands and make the withered hands right, right? What more signs do you need? These people cannot figure this out. But he says, no sign shall be given to this generation, even though he was the sign. And it was blaring right in front of their face. 13, and leaving them, again entering into the boat, he went away to the other side. And they had forgotten to take bread. And they did not have more than one loaf with them in the, in the boat. And there, there we go again. These guys are like, hmm. Man, this bread really makes them stumble. It does. The bread makes them stumble like the pork makes a Christian stumble. And he was warning them, saying, Mind, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herodias. And they were reasoning with one another, saying, Because we have no bread? I don't know unless Hebrew is like very similar words or something. I don't know how, like, he Because they've heard him speak in parables several times now. They, they should be figuring this out. They should slowly be figuring this out or at least get a grasp of their not about the bread. But they're thinking somehow he knows that they drop bread and that's going to be a big problem. Like he just can't pull a fish out of water or something, cook it up right there. Well, this is something interesting as well because the event of the bread and stuff just happened, right? They just right. had this happen. So this can tell us a couple of things. One is they didn't keep any of the food for themselves, right? Because they only had like a little piece. And so all those baskets that they carried out, they gave to everybody else. But they did not understand that, hey, you can make more from whatever it is. You know? It's one loaf, man. That's a lot compared to what we had last <laughs> and time. It's like, I mean, if he had to, he would break it up and fill the entire boat full of bread. Yeah, and what, is, what does he mean when he says, beware of the leaven of Pharisees and the leaven of uh, Herodias? He what watch is, out for the teachings of them. Nicole, what is leaven? It's a ingredient to make things rise. It's a rising agent is what you would say? Is that what it is? Right? And so it's a rising agent. And so anything that you put leaven into, it changes the, the flour or it changes the substance. Anything that's like fermented or, or that causes activation like that. Um, and that is what he's saying. Beware of this. And they didn't understand. It's funny they didn't understand this. But they, I guess they lived in this pharisaical world their entire lives. And so this is all they grew up with were these um, broken priests that were all, you know, outside of, of Torah. All right. And Yahushua being aware of it said, aware of it said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? See, he's having a hard time with these guys too. He's like, hmm. And he's like, maybe these guys are a little slow, right? Maybe that's it. Maybe they're just a little slow. So I'm going to work with you guys. So he goes, this is what he says. When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets filled the, with broken pieces did you pick up? They said to him, 12. And when I broke the seven for the 4,000, 
How many large baskets filled with broken pieces did you pick up? And they said, seven. And he said to them, how do you not understand? Now, this is one of these, um, this is this is like Messiah going, hey, are you stupid? I mean, it's, it's the nice way of doing it. And another way of, like, do you lack understanding? Um, the word understanding means that you, when, when you take the base of that word, you're standing under what people are telling you. If you understand somebody, that means you get what they are saying. So if you're not standing under somebody, you don't get it. And they definitely were not standing under anyone. And he came to Bet Zaida, and they bought, brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. And taking the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village, and having spit on his eyes, laying hand on him, he asked him, do you see it all? Okay, so here we go again. And, you know, I, this is, I just want to discuss these things, right? This is very interesting, right? One time when he healed the guy that was deaf, he put his fingers on his ears, spit, and then t grabbed his tongue, right? Now, I mean, I don't know if he really spit on the guy's eyes. I mean, if he was blind, I mean, I, that's the holy spit right there, right? That is the spit of life, you know, and, and it's, if, if, if you have the Messiah spit on you, that means you're, you're, you're either doomed or you're really lucky, right? That's one of two things. And this guy was really super lucky because he, he got the, the spit of life. Um, so I don't know. It says having spit on his eyes. Did your guys say spit on the man's eyes? Yeah, and yep. when he had spit on his eyes. Man, it's like supervising. I don't know what to say. It, it worked. It worked. <laughs> Almost. 24. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Okay. This was a guy that was blind all his life. He had never seen anything before. How does this guy know what a tree looks That's like? That's what I was wondering. How does, a tree, well, how does he know what a tree looks like? Um, Probably because he felt it, right? He would know yeah, what... Yeah, he would know what it like, feels like, that like. He, would, he could feel it and see it. How he knows what it looks like, I don't know. I will tell you that when you go blind... You see things like trees walking. I mean, at the beginning of this year, I went completely blind. 100% blind. I could see nothing. And I was blind for a little bit. Um, and it was amazing, the process of going blind. And it was amazing, the process of receiving my sight. And it is amazing how amazing eyes are. And it is amazing that we are able to, you know, just the, the amount of computer processing that we have simply by looking from around the room, you are taking thousands and thousands of pictures and looking at them and you see them in real time. The processing ability and the processing of our creator is just simply amazing. So um, this guy was, his life was about to be changed. 25. Then he placed his hands on his eyes again and made him look up and he was restored and saw all clearly. So First of all, he got somewhat eyes restored with the visine burst. And then he was, his hands on him. And, you know, so he, then he puts his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. So I could just envision this. I'd like to do that to one of you guys. Put my hands in and look up just like that, right? That's what I, I envision on this thing. And he saw clearly. And he sent him away to his home saying, do not go into the village. And Yahushua and his Talmudian went out to the villages of Caesarea, Philippos. And on the way, he asked his Talmudian, saying to them, Who do men say I am? And they said to him, Yochanan the Immerser, and others, Eliyahu, but others, one of the Nebium. And he asked them, And you, who do you say I am? And Kepha, Kepha, answered and said to him, You are Hamashiach. And he warned them, that they should speak to no one about him. And he began to teach. I'm going to stop right there. Why did he warn them not to tell people he was the Mashiach? Uh, they would have stoned him. Yeah, but, Messiah, I mean, he didn't. Messiah didn't I care about that. They would have stoned the people. They would have stoned the people around saying, well, going around parading other people. Let's, let's, let's think about this. Why would, at this moment, did he... Why, first of all, why does he tell all these people he heals not to say a word? Uh, probably because he wants people to figure it out on their own. Yeah, I mean, it's not for, a, you know, the popularity is a problem. He's completely very popular right now. And so it would be hard to go from one side to the other. But anyone have any ideas why he did not want people to know at this moment that he was the Mashiach? Uh, probably because his time wasn't coming. He didn't want them to know yet. He wanted... Yeah, because they would make him king. They would have made him the king right then and there. That's he probably true. Them. Like where they did the Hoshana thing. They would have put a crown on his head and they would have caused a huge uproar against Herodias and the entire people. Very good. Very good. Yeah, no, that's that's... Beautiful. That's that's right. Yeah. And so um, 
he was coming to reign in a different way that they didn't understand. They did not understand he had to come to be the sacrifice. Okay, 31. And he began to teach them that the bin of Adam has to suffer much and be rejected by the elders and chief Kohenan and scribes and be killed and after three days to rise again. And he was speaking about this openly. And then Kepha, taking him aside, began to rebuke him. And turning around and seeing his Talmudian, he rebuked Kepha, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for your thoughts are not those of Elohim, but those of men. Okay, this is a very interesting discussion point right here, right? How is it that Kepha was able to say things that obviously weren't from Kepha, right? It was obviously from Satan. Why? Why is this? How is this, how is this possible? What does the power of Satan have? I mean, he's obviously able to take a, a um, Talmudian, a, um, a, a seeker of Yah, and, you know, he, he's trying to embed things into Messiah Yahushua's head, right? And it was enough that he says, get behind me, Satan. And, you know, everybody of the Talmudian would have, like, looked over and, like, whoa, what, you know, what? What's really going on? So um, I think we should all understand the power of the demons and the power of Hasatan and that sometimes your thoughts are not going to be your thoughts, right? Obviously, because um, if Kepha was able to be uh, polluted by Satan, you know, surely we're able to be owned as well. And so we have to be very careful that our thoughts, our heart, our mind, our soul, everything that we are doing is for the kingdom. It absolutely has to be like this. And if we get off that path, then you can definitely have Satan get there. And it looks like Satan can infiltrate anyway. Okay, 34. And calling near the crowd with his Talmudian, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. Okay, your guys is all say cross. Yep. There is, there was no cross back in the days, folks. This was not a way that they executed. They, they did not execute people on a cross. They executed them on a stake um, some people believe that it, the, the, the upper cross beam was like a giant um, piece of wood that you would walk and you would be hooked to it and then they would lift you up as you're attached to this onto the stake and hold you up like that. But more than likely, it was a, like a tree, a giant tree and your arms at the top of your head, above your head are nailed to the top of them and your feet are nailed to the bottom of it and it is a, an excruciating excruciating death. Okay. 35. For whoever desires to save his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for the sake of me and the good news, he shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gains all the world and loses his own kai? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinning generation of him, the bin of Adam, also shall be ashamed when he comes in the esteem of his father with the Kadesh messengers. Okay, we have a thing right here. It says he's coming in the esteem of his father. He does not say the father is coming down, right? It doesn't ever say this. There is no Trinity. There is no doctrine of Trinity. If the Trinity exists, then our Messiah is a liar right here because it wouldn't be the esteem of his father. It would say something like the bin of Adam shall be returned and I will have full esteem with my Kadesh messengers. And it does not say that, right? They are two separate entities, two separate people that are doing the work of one. And it's just like a father, son. It's like a husband, wife. It's like a family reunited. We're all doing the work of one. That does not make us all the same individuals, right? All right. So with that, I think that is good. Anyone have anything? Uh, read your Bibles. We will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, and you guys missed the youth for y'all last night. We had some dog craziness. We got to get our, our game back a little little together. Okay, I guess that is it. Anyone have anything else? Uh, read your Bibles and shalom. 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 All right. Shalom. Bye, everyone.